Hey guys, this is Jim, WT1W, and you're watching FEP Labs Radio. Thanks for stopping by. Appreciate it. So, I need to make some radials. My DX Commander has a large set of radials out there, and my lawnmower guy has a thing to get the weed eater a little too close and snatch radials, so I, have to, I need to make some new ones. And I thought, well, let me share with you guys some of my thoughts about radials. And what I'm going to talk about kind of works for pretty much any antenna that's going to need radials. There are multiple ways to do this. First of all, I have a ton of DX10 that I bought from Lord Callum. I'm probably going to use DX10 for radials, but you don't have to. Sure, more wire, thicker wire is better. It's probably electrically more awesome and gets you more radios and contacts and RF and everything. But with our Poseidon antenna, for example, we're using 22 gauge BN Tech Go, which is what this stuff is. This is cheap. It's about 10 or $12 a roll on Amazon. Radials don't need to be the best wire you got. They could be the cheapest wire you got. Um, the Smokin' Ape has mentioned that he uses speaker wire, which is also dirt cheap. So if you have an issue with your local lawn maintenance professional, maybe you wanna go cheap. Again, this is some DX10. First of all, you'll need some tools, uh, wire cutters and wire strippers. <clears throat> and if you look here, you see a whole bunch of stuff laying out. Obviously, you'll need that too. So when you do radials, and I'm talking specifically about a DX Commander, but it's gonna be very similar on a lot of other antennas. There's some method for you to fasten the radial wire or bundle of wires to the antenna itself. On the DX Commander, it's a plate about six, eight inches in diameter and it has bolts threaded up through it and wing nuts that screw down on top of the bolts to hold on the radial bundles. Callum provides spade terminals. This is not a spade terminal. These are ring terminals. And the ring terminals work fine. Uh, so do the spade terminals, but they can get snatched off kind of easy, and you may want that and you may not, and more about that in a second. But here's an option. You can stick your radial bundle in this, crimp and or solder or crimp and solder and uh, put this over the nut. Now these are kind of the wrong size. The hole is a little big and it'd be, it would not be a good connection. So I can't use these for the DX commander bolts, but something like this in the appropriate size would absolutely work. And it would probably keep your radial bundles from getting ripped off the antenna. Uh, I am here to tell you when a weed eater meets a radial, it's usually not a positive outcome for the radials and sometimes the bundle. So this is an option, not a bad option. Then we have fair rules. Now fair rules could work if you have a terminal that you're gonna stick them into, similar to something like this. So you could twist all your wires up in a fair rule and then do a crimp on it and then stick this in the ring terminal or in some other kind of terminal and that would possibly work as well, possibly. I don't know. It seems like it's an extra step that doesn't do anything for me. This is what I'm using on my antenna setup. And I also have converted the radio bundle on my Kronos and my Poseidon antennas to use this kind of setup. This is a spade terminal here. That's what this is called. On that end and on this end is a female banana jack connector. And the reason I like those, and here is a bag of banana jacks, is that if something happens to the radio bundle, typically it will get snatched off the antenna and not pull the antenna down. That is kind of the issue with using something like this. Using a um, straight ring terminal and you want to move the antenna or take it down for maintenance, you still have to reach down there and unscrew the screw and, and to get the radials disconnected. Using something like this setup, you can just unplug the connector with the radio bundle, leave the radials in place where they are on the ground, and this goes with the antenna base. So it makes it, in my opinion, super easy to disconnect your antenna. And these little connectors, uh, these are FOSS power. I'll put links to all this stuff I'm showing you guys um, in the description below. All those links are gonna be affiliate links, doesn't cost you any extra. It will help out the channel for me to bring you more awesome thrilling content like this. So these little guys come with a shell, obviously. And then this is hollow inside. There are two set screws on either side of this. 
designed to screw into the wire that you're using these with. So you can use these obviously for power connections or, or other things. We're only, this is only one connector, uh, one connection. There is not a hot and a ground. It, this is the only connection in it. So you would have to have a hot one and a ground one if you were gonna use this for your power supply. A lot of power supplies have these style connectors on them as well. So what I like to do is take my wire, and again, I'm gonna use some DX10 for this demo quickly. So let's say we're gonna cut our bunch of radials, and I'm just gonna cut some faux radials here for us real quick. And I like to do my radials in bundles of five, about five meters long. So that's about uh, 15 to 18 feet in bald eagle units. And then there are places on the antenna for six or eight connections for radials. So here is my fake bundle of radials at this point. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to strip these back. And you don't have to be super scientific about this. I love these wire crimpers, or strippers. These things are great. And they are adjustable for how deep and how much of a cut you want to make. Spring-loaded. They also have crimps on them for the crimps with the insulation on them like these. Oops, that's so bright in the light. For insulated crimps as well as non-insulated crimps, the ones without the plastic shell around them. And then it also has a cutter in it as well right there. So these are a great all-around tool to have in a go bag or in your pocket whenever you're working on wires. Love those things. And again, there'll be a link for all this stuff below. So now we've, we've cut our radials. We strip the ends of our radials, and again, these are uh, these are faux radios for demonstrative purposes. So I have my bundle of five radio wires, and then I take the bundle, and I just twist all these things together, like so, and get a nice tight twist on it. Then typically at this point, I would solder this as well. Um, I'd flow this full of solder just to help hold it together and give it a little extra strength. But what we do at this point is we take our screwdriver and back out these little set screws. And hopefully you back them out enough that you can get the wire in, but that the little tiny screw does not fall out of the connector. And then once you have that out, you take your radio bundle, put it in there, and of course you have this soldered too. I don't think you have to solder it. I just think it adds a fair amount of extra strength. And then take your set screws and crank them down. So now this whole connector is soldered, connected, and has our radial bundle on it. And then at this point, again, these are on the antenna. And when I put these on the DX Commander, what I did was put them under the wing nut, hand tighten the wing nut, and then I took a pair of pliers to each wing nut and cranked down on them with lock washers as well, and then cranked again. Uh, so these things are pretty much not coming off. The beauty of this is, like I said, if one of these gets caught in a weed eater, uh, you know, it'll generally just snatch the radial out without pulling the antenna down, which is one reason I don't like something like ring terminals, because potentially if that weed eater, the agent of doom for any antenna, catches this thing, it's going to keep on pulling and probably pull the antenna down. So that's why I like these. Plus, which these are just super easy to disconnect if I want to do any maintenance on the antenna. And then that just goes in there like so. And there is my radio connection. Again, this is already fastened to the base of the antenna. All I'm doing is plugging these in, and then I can throw them out wherever I need them to do. This also would work well for something like a portable operation where you're setting up an antenna and taking it down, you know, in a short amount of time. Not a lot of work. On something like our Cockingham Radio Poseidon or the Kronos that we're working on, our verticals, 
require radials. You hook this to the winder of your Poseidon and leave that dangling. Then take your radial bundle, hook it up like this, and then when you're ready to radio, plug her in and go. The beauty of that situation with something like our Poseidon antenna is that I can now wrap up my antenna wire when I'm done and it's around the winder and I can take my radio bundle and coil it up and then put a wire tie or something like that, a Velcro wire zip tie deal across it and the radials are not gonna get all snaggled up with the antenna wire. That is how I do radials. And this is, I think, probably the, the easiest and, and most straightforward way to do radials. It allows for maintenance. You can get in there and disconnect them. If you need to make a new bunch, you can just take this thing off, unscrew it, you know, and, uh, and add a wire if you need to, or if you wanna create some, a bunch of radials, easy enough to add more. And the beauty of it is if I wanna add more radials to one wing nut point, all I gotta do is put another one of these little suckers on there, and now I can have two bunches of radials on each, on each connection. Guys, that's all I've got for this video. I hope it helped a little bit. If you would give me a thumbs up, make sure you're subscribed to the channel. It's in the dingus below, as are all the links for all this stuff that I've shared here in this video. And ring the bell, it's over here somewheres, uh, and that will let you know whenever I post a new video. Guys, thank you very much for watching 73.